Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you as I offer these words this morning, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. We are, are making our way over 40 days of Lenten practices, and we're given uh, this gospel lesson Uh, And what I want to point out is that it exists in both Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospels. And that we are told uh, how uh, after Jesus' baptism, he was led by the Holy Spirit uh, into the desert uh, and making his own wilderness uh, journey. This is intended to recall for us the Sinai wanderings of the people of Israel with Moses and Joshua, and how the people, as they wandered through the desert, a real desert, that they were uh, dependent upon God. It took them 40 years. It's only going to take you about 37 from this point on, so you're 37 days. You've got, you're good, okay? So we only have to make 37 days. Jesus is mimicking this time in the desert, and he, we were told, he's hungry uh, in Matthew's gospel, and that the tempter comes to him. Uh, and immediately our fascination with the Faustian devil causes our eye immediately to be drawn to the devil in the story, and that means we will miss everything else that's taking place. <laughs> so we need to take the devil and kick him out of the story for a moment and just say that he is there as the tempter. So we want to talk about temptation today. And uh, our fascination kind of holds us back, and yet Jesus' temptation is tended to point out to us that journey in the desert of the Israel, the people of Israel, and how they had to treat and reorient their vision to God as opposed to their own desires and wishes. And for us, it is to Jesus' ministry and to our own freedom. The tempter says to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become like loaves of bread. And Jesus answers, it's written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, he's quoting... Uh, drawing upon that narrative in the book, which you can find in the Bible, called Deuteronomy. Jesus is reminding us of God's promise to provide for us and God's promise to prevail no matter what we face. No matter what we face. In this world, death, trial, will not have the last word, (laughs) but God will prevail through the power of Jesus Christ. God's love and deliverance, whether it be manna or any other sustaining gift, will always endure. And so Jesus rejects the notion that any kind of earthly goods, even bread when we're hungry, uh, will be eventually heavenly stones building up into the kingdom, but rather to remind ourselves that rust and moth always consume. And I want to point out, I think this is the first freedom of Lent. A lot of times in Lent we talk about the things that bind us. I want to talk today about the things that give us freedom. This is the first freedom of our Lenten journey. And it is freedom from the dependence upon earthly things to make us happy. Right? We think everything's going to make us happy. If we just had, if we had that, if we had that, if we did that, if we earned that, all of our minds are hustling constantly for earthly things. And the first freedom is to say, you don't have to hustle. You don't have to hustle. God loves you already. God's love precedes your hustling. So just stop it. Freedom. Right, there you go, see? It, it should make you laugh, right? I mean, it's like, 
Oh my gosh, I didn't know it was that easy. Yeah, it's just freedom. It's just freedom, pure and simple. Then the tempter says, okay, that didn't work. He takes Jesus to the top of the holy city, places him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he says, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. And Jesus responds again from Deuteronomy. Again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Now, Jesus, I think, is getting a little frustrated uh, at this point. And that's kind of a pretty hard quip to even to give to the devil, you know, <laughs> to stop testing me. Uh, uh, but remember, the people in the desert also tested the Lord. He has sent us out here to die. We should, they even said in the scripture, let's go back to Egypt. Like that was the high point of their lives, <laughs> right? I mean, like that's how bad it is. They are tempting the Lord God. And Jesus shows us in this passage that God is always present with us, bidden or not bidden, in tough times. It is God who is faithful beyond sometimes our lack of faithfulness. God is there for us. Uh, and Jesus will promise in his very last days with the disciples, he, Jesus, will be with us all even to the end of the ages. And I think this is the second freedom that we receive and should practice uh, remembering in Lent, the second freedom of Lent, and that is that we are no longer bound to have to do everything by ourselves. We are no longer bound to believe that we are alone. But we may see clearly that Jesus walks with us every day of our lives and that Jesus's church is present for us always. All we have to do is walk in. The freedom to know that you and I are not alone in this world, no matter how lonely we may feel. Finally, Jesus is taken to a high mountain and shown all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And the tempter says, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus says from Deuteronomy, worship the Lord your God and serve him. Uh, we, and, and I, uh, we are not the God of our lives, nor the masters of our own destiny. Destiny. There are so many people surrounding us to help us find our way. So many people in our lives, past and present, who offer words of guidance, of love, of support, of grace. And sometimes it's hard for us to hear them because we think all of it is on upon our shoulders. And it just is not. God is there with us and so many other people and God is in charge. This is the third freedom of Lent, the freedom from trying to control everything and every outcome, right? You cannot save yourself. You can't grow one bit of hair on your head, and I promise people have tried. You, this is what the Scripture tells us. We are not in control. So who are we fooling? Ah, be free. In these 37 or so days that are left, practice letting go and some of this freedom to not think it all depends upon you. The God of Sinai will deliver us. We have no other God but the God of Jesus Christ. We rest upon God's providence and God's faithfulness. Our covenant and our community life starts by focusing upon this God and not by amassing comfort by other means, not in the courts of the powerful or by worshiping and celebrating our own successes, but always giving thanks for the God whose spirit is working in me. Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. And part of Lent is reminding ourselves that that grace and mercy precedes us 
and every wrong we have ever committed. That God has already saved you. For while we were yet far off, the scripture says, God came in Jesus, became lower than the angels, Paul reminds us, so that we might be saved and dwell with God forever. This is a time to put into practice those freedoms, to consider those things that feed us truly. It's a time when we recognize God's faithfulness and this gift of grace and forgiveness. It is a time when we look for the good news of resurrection that emanates from the cross. Lent is a time to renew the worship of God instead of placing Sunday and weekly attendance as something that are just bygone things of the past. It is better, I promise you, to start your week out remembering you are not in control of things, that God is with you, you are not alone, and you are only required to open your eyes and ears and listen a little bit to what our Lord is giving you in grace and freedom. This Sunday of Lent, do not be tempted to lead a life different than the one God has committed to you with. And do not forget, try to try and find a little bit of grace that you may live a life worthy of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop. And spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.